So welcome everyone to the Energy Medicine Body Wisdom interview series. I'm Alison Palmer and together we are all on the path of the awakening soul. It is my real pleasure today to be speaking with Maria Cristina Al Gutierrez. And what we're going to be talking about is change your frequency, heal your life. So welcome, Maria. Thank you, Alison. Happy to be here with you. Yeah, and this is going to be so good because um, we all want to change. We all want to heal our lives, don't we? So you know, <laughs> let's do it. Um, using you know, you talk about frequency and. I think, I was thinking about this word and I was thinking, it's a word that we use, but we don't use it. And so how I was thinking we use it, we say, oh, that person's on my frequency. We use it, you know, in everyday language, kind of, kind of throw away, but with an understanding of, you know, yeah, I get that person. But we don't really, many of us don't actually use that word as an everyday word when we're talking about you know, our path and, and our healing journey. So I'd love to start there. What do you mean when you, when you talk about frequency? Mm -hmm. uh, when I talk about it, uh, I'm talking about the hertz, like the actual measurable um, hertz, sound frequency, vibration. And everything has a vibration. Right, I mean, it, it stems from the quantum level and then the geometries that come into place to create form, they vibrate at a certain frequency to create these solid forms that we can touch and see and be a, and live in our bodies, right? And so everything we see is, is humming at some kind of frequency. And when we look at a stone um, or a mineral, like a granite or shale, these things are humming in a very slow vibrational cycling. Uh, uh, so that would be a lower hertz. And then we get up into fresh foods and vegetables and herbs. And then we come up into like, you know, if they're organic and good soil and sunlight, they're at 27 hertz, right? And then we come up into crystals and the the things that can transmit and um, be conduits for energy. And then it fluctuates, but these can go up even higher into the hertz. For our bodies, a healthy human being, we have a hertz of about 68 to 72. And so we're constantly a healthy human being with a healthy immune system. We're taking care of our bodies. We have this kind of fluctuating in that 68 to 72. And then if we're eating the vibrant, full of life force foods as well, it is in synergy with our bodies. It's a harmonic, it, it feeds the health. If we are eating things that are zero hertz, like canned foods, processed foods, like go into you know, your, your average corner market and it's like chips and candy bars, zero or, or negative <laughs> hertz, right? Um, and that's going to challenge our bodies. If we're healthy enough, we'll just digest it, break it down, and bring the body back up. But it will take a toll. It will deplete our energy, right? And so this is just kind of our, our everyday um, engagement with, with these frequencies. Um, and then there's also our brain waves, right? Um, and so what I'm really excited about what I get really passionate about is our ability to shift the hurts in our bodies through shifting our brain waves, shifting our brain waves through working with our uh, emotions and thoughts and our spirit, our spiritual essence. Um, and so when we meditate, we go into the gamma wave, um, which is just opens this expansive uh, state in us, we're open, we're receptive, we're clearly perceiving reality, uh, we can download information really quickly. Um, it's in the gamma waves that we are able to come online with our intuition, like our clairvoyance, our clairaudience, our claircognizance. Um, and our body is lifted 
the physiology, the biology that we are is then fed. It's like feeding our body the most nourishing food when we are in gamma, right? And we're just feeding our body and our body gets to raise in vibration. And that creates a state that is kind of um, impenetrable to disease. So disease starts at, in the 40s. If we drop to 40 hertz, 47 hertz or below, we become susceptible to disease. Um, so when we, our system gets weaker and we shake somebody's hand who has a cold, you know, then we can like just catch that cold. Um, and, you know, if we're weakened for long extended periods of time where we're not getting enough sleep and under undue stress, then we're really susceptible. So cancer, for example, can we're susceptible to getting cancer at that lower um, 40s uh, frequency in hertz in our bodies. Um, and when we transition out of body, our body goes to around 25 hertz um, and then we leave, right? Okay. So everything's vibration. It's so amazing to hear you describe everything in this way um, because it just kind of blows my mind a little bit. Um, and one of the questions that I have is if our body is the vibration um, and vibrating at, at different frequencies, um, is our body a manifestation of spirit? I think it's a collaboration, right? I mean, ultimately, um, and what we know from the spiritual masters throughout time is everything is consciousness. Right, and consciousness is in and through everything at every dimensional layer, and so here we are in the lower kind of cycling vibrations frequencies, the third dim the third dimension, right? Um, fourth, third, second, first. This is more dense. It's heavier gravity, you know, um, and then as we evolve higher in through the dimensional um, you know, fields, there's less and less gravity and there's more and more, um, a faster and faster cycling of the frequencies, right? And so yes, everything is consciousness and matter is a dreaming. I like to think that matter is dreamed by consciousness, right? And so there's a, this, this great consciousness. I connect it personally to the great mother. So I say the, the great dreamer, the great mother is dreaming. The feminine consciousness of the universe is dreaming. And then she breathes out vibration. And these vibrations take on the pattern of her dreaming, these sacred geometries, right? And they turn into form. And the, the vibration starts to attract um, you know, the subatomic particles and then into atomic and then into molecular and then into cellular, and then we have form. So in a way, yes, like everything is spiritual. Everything is consciousness. Mm. And that's can be be transformed by it, yeah. That's such a beautiful image um, that you shared just then. It's very, a very powerful visual image to to hold on to in a way. I know we're not meant to hold on to things, but I just think it was so beautiful and so powerful. I really love it. It really does, you know, it really does um, mean that we are so deeply connected to Mother Earth. We're so connected to that. We are Mother Earth dreams, Mother Earth's dreams. I love that, that's amazing. And um, beyond. You know, like great, the great mother is like the universal mother, and then she dreams Mother Earth. Mm -hmm. So then we get to be this collaborative dream of form and spirit. Amazing, amazing. So, um, sound vibration, okay, how can we use sound vibration to? to start to heal ourselves. Where, I mean, how do we even know where to begin with that? How do we know what frequency we individually are vibrating at? Beautiful, yeah, I love that question. 
You know, um, when I was in my 20s, I went on my first um, vision fast into the wilderness. Uh, and then I just kept going and going <laughs> and going into the wilderness. And one of the things that I loved about that time alone in nature, um, like three or four days and nights with only water, is you slow down enough that your physiology starts to entrain or harmonize with the nature around you. And then it's almost like you can hear your soul song, mm -hmm. right? You start to hear who you truly are and hear the quality, hear, sense, perceive these qualities um, that make you up, your original blueprint or patterning. Um, and if, like what I like to do is when I wander in nature or just sit, sit in that vision fast state is to start to hum and sing to myself and these beautiful melodies start coming out, right? It's like, ah, oh, this is my soul song. This is my essence. I'm just content, you know? I'm not forcing anything. I'm not trying to sound good or <laughs> like create a song. <laughs> it's just issuing forth from my being, right? It's like my hum, that's my vibration. Um, and then you can also see what you gravitate towards, what pulls you in, what colors, what sounds, what kind of music. Um, and it's a hint to you of where you're vibrating right now. When I was in high school in the 90s and the grunge music first came out, right? So Generation X and here's like Pearl Jam and Nirvana. And it was kind of like this interesting, crunchy music um, that was could be political, emotional, angry, um, wanting justice, but also just want to understand ourselves. And I gravitated to it because I was trying to figure myself out too. It may not have been a healing frequency for me as far as like, you know, the solfeggio scales and the very high high frequencies, but it helped me to move through what I was getting through at that time. Mm -hmm. um, there's definitely different, like what you're drawn to, the foods you eat, it's a hint. The crystals you're drawn to, the metals, gold, silver, copper, brass, like what are you drawn to? It's kind of giving you a mirror of, um, of the quality of your own vibration. Okay, okay. So um, I've got a glass of water in front of me, and I'm really curious to know, you know, so the vibration of water, is this a powerful vibration? Does it matter if it's been in a plastic bottle or if it comes out of the tap? Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Water is, um, holds memory. Water is a conduit, it, it's a conducer, right? And so it holds energy, it holds memory. Um, and so when we take time with water and bless it and just hold it with our hands for just 10 minutes uh, and then drink it, you've just raised the frequency of that water to be in more harmony and more healing to your body, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's interesting because the people who live in India who are in reverence with the Ganges River, right? It's like a Westerner can travel to India and, and go into the Ganges and drink some, and they get deadly sick. Yeah. <laughs> um, but with somebody who grew up there in reverence with the spirit of that river, they can dunk, they can bathe, they can drink it. And it's a blessing because they're in harmony with the vibration. They're in a spirit to spirit communion with that water. Um, and so for each individual person to be in relationship, um, even with your medications, right? If you're taking pharmaceuticals, if you're taking supplements and you go to an herb store and you buy a bottle of whatever, vitamin C, what have you, it's like, take a moment to raise the vibration because you're a conduit and you can transmit and fill these atoms and molecules that make up these substances and compounds with life force you know your your energy 
can, you know, can fill it, but also universal, universal life force can come in and infuse what you're about to ingest, your food, your supplements, what have you. And so with water, um, water is, has memory. So it's going to take on whatever we um, put into it. There have been incredible experiments by many, many people that I want to name in particular Sondra Ingerman, who wrote Soul Retrieval. She's in the um, Western shamanic um, practitioner and She's done amazing experiments where a group of practitioners will get together and they will meditate on a, a body of water, like a river or a creek uh, and that goes to the ocean that is um, full of poisons and chemicals um, from a nearby plant or something. Uh, and they will take a sample of the water, put it in a bowl in the middle of their meditation circle and spend a couple hours of sending it gratitude uh, or um, you know a high frequency quality of, of thought blessing and then they'll spend another hour later and after days they test the water and it's completely pure right so what happened there um, and that goes back to at the quantum level everything's energy and vibration Right? Everything is sound and light. And because we are sound and light and we're engaging with other forms that in the original is sound and light, we can become architects of the quantum field through our sending our intentions into the field. Wow. I love that. That sense of connectedness. Um, so on a day-to-day -day basis for us as individuals, what what kind of things um, what kind of things should we be looking out for? What kind of um, two there's two different things that are coming through to me. One is like what should we look out for that might be like a red flag of warning that we need to do something, and what can we do? How, what could a normal day be like? You know, when we're just learning to to perhaps put this into practice, right? Um, so one thing that I work with my students on is we work with our energy fields. And so I tell them, um, what color frequency do you feel most uh, empowered with, right? So what is your, the most vital, healthy color for you? And they meditate and they come up with a color or maybe a range of colors. It's like, fill your field with that right, fill your body with it, fill your aura all the way to the edge with it and walk through your day um, constantly kind of like maybe have an alarm set on your phone that ding, ah, fill my aura with this color, fill my aura with this color, you know, and you walk through the day in that frequency and you find that things that would have muffled you before don't so much, you're much more grounded, you feel more confident and like you're not leaving yourself to see what others are seeing in you, you know, how we pop out and we're like, what are they seeing about me? What are they thinking about me? You know, like, no, you just live here and you're surrounded with this nourishing frequency that you've intended. You set your intention on it. And so it is right. Um, so that's a wonderful thing to do. Start doing every single day as well as um, words hold frequency, our words our prayers, sound. So when I wake up in the morning, I'll begin with setting an intention for my day and, and including, you know, I'm not, I'm not an island. I'm going to include resources that, are, that can be supportive to me. So I reach out to the animals and plant spirits. I reach out to my healthy ancestors. I reach out to the Great Mother and the Divine Father, and I'm like, hold me today. May I have humor today. May I um, you know, may I be kind, meet everyone with kindness and generosity, and may my frequency be sustained in this love, this unconditional love today. I am willing to be this today, and I say yes to it, right? And you start your day that way. It's very different. You set the tone for your day, right? And just these two things make such a difference. Yes, I can really feel that both of them very very powerful 
and I'm certainly going to do the colour uh, as you were talking about it. Um, I just really felt myself filling up with the colour, which was bright yellow. I'll share that with you. Um, so just a word on that. Does the colour, uh, you know, if say today I'm feeling, wow, you know, I really feel bright yellow and tomorrow I feel like, um, well, dark green, perhaps like this. I, you know, I feel like dark green. Um, what does that say? Does it, what does that say? Like, uh, you know, is that something that we can, we can learn something from? Because, you know, to fill your aura with those two very different colors or, or a sort of, you know, a very bright color one day and a very dull color the next day. Does that help us to understand anything about where we are? Mm. Um, it depends on where that color uh, is arising from in your own consciousness, yeah? Okay. So if you are in meditation in the morning and you're still kind of out of that dream state and your astral body is coming back in and anchoring back in for the day, and you're just like, okay, what is the color that will bring me the most balance and, and contentment and life force today? Mm -hmm. And then a color appears in your intuition and you fill yourself with it. Um, maybe if you're not a visual person, you might just hear hear it, indigo. You know, okay, great. You, know, you just affirm it is so. Um, and if it's coming from that place, then it's often a color that will help you regulate and be in balance and in harmony with your environment. Um, if it's thinking, you know, if you're in your analyzer and you're thinking about it, it's just like, well, I should choose this color because it's a spiritual color. I'll choose violet or something, you know, and we have these ideas and it's very kind of mental. Um, it may not be what you really need. Um, it may be coming from the ego, right? Yeah. Um, but if you really trust your heart and your body knows, you could even leave it up to your body. Like, okay, body, let's invoke the frequency, the vibration that will most support us today. And then it's just like, you feel an upliftment. You feel like, I hear it. I'm a very audio-centered audio person. So I hear this like, right? <laughs> wow. Like, really high, like whale song, really high into, into the inaudible frequencies. And my whole body just starts like vibrating. And then I'm like, perfect. That was like a clearing. And now I can balance out and go through my day. Um, so that's not a color. But if I wanted to know what color is that, maybe I could receive what, what color. Because every, every frequency has a color. It, there's a color to every single vibration. So. Wow. I was thinking, you know, that the little children, how free they are with color how instinctual they are with color and with noise as well and probably probably because it makes sense and you're going to let me know if this is wrong um it is because they are just more more connected to that those whole realms that the and expressing and being in the vibration that they're in and just being it and let you know just they're not trying to hide it or anything like that they're just it okay. i was thinking about my daughter and she was when she was a, a tiny child she would just i'd let her choose her own clothes to wear and it was like frantic madness you know exuberance and uh, such such passion for for just joy joyfulness you know um yeah. I feel we've we've really disconnected from all of that, and possibly this is a fabulous way to reconnect to it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely, yeah. That's another thing that um, I invite people to 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 reconnect to your to do specific colors. Um, when my students are going through the program I teach, and, and we get to the first chakra, I'm like, what is your red? What is your unique red? you know um and and they go into meditation and they let it arise and like so now go find an article of clothing that you can wear for the next two weeks and just let your red hold you and notice what happens when you start honoring your red as sacred and and um like 
disconnect it from the way that our culture has used the color red for like danger, alert, stop, you know, mm -hmm. um, which is discordant to the harmonic, right? So mm -hmm. claim your red and wear it for two weeks and notice how you feel. And then for the second chakra, claim your orange. What does that look like? What is that? Is it rusty orange? Is it tangerine orange, you know? And then wear an article, clothing or, or jewelry, right? And so it's fascinating to see what, how it changes people's lives to personalize it and discover the unique frequency for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really love that. It really does appeal to me. Right? Um, um, eating foods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a question which seems to be slipping away. Oh, I, yes, I know what it is. Um, and you touched upon it about people going into their heads and trying to think, is this right? Is this right? Um, you know, we're all really, really practiced at going too much into our heads and worrying if we're getting things wrong, you know, am I doing this right? I don't know. So I'm going to stop because I don't know if I'm doing it right. You know, I encounter this again and again and again, um, everywhere amongst people. Yeah. Now, how can we, how can we allow ourselves to, to not go into that place? Sure. Um, well, I'm going to say something that, that may um, be very, um, I don't know, foreign or new to, to some people here, but um, you know that humanity, especially in certain countries, there are projected um, bandwidths into human consciousness field to create anxiety, confusion, self-doubt, self-hatred, um, and more of an enslaved brainwave state. Um, and so when I hear that somebody, if a client comes to me or I have students that are really struggling with um, chronic self-doubt, chronic confusion, chronic anxiety, not trusting themselves, mm -hmm. um, that tells me that they are plugged in to a bandwidth, that it is not actually their natural state. And so then I give them a protocol that, that will help them unplug from this lower bandwidth that is manipulating their brain waves and their emotional state, right? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes after a session or after, um, you know, listening to music that is of a high frequency, you can, you can get um, CD sets of the solfeggio scale and listen to the frequency of 741 hertz or 528 hertz that is healing, it's genetically healing, it's spiritually awakening, you know, and listen to that for, put it on in your house every morning. People unplug, they start to like land in themselves again, they are being constantly undermined, right? But then we have to be mature, <laughs> see, like spiritual beings in human bodies and be responsible with our energy and take care of ourselves every day because if you live in a city in particular you have 5g coming in you have smart meters you have your cell phone you have all of these emf fields that at the level they're being projected really do um, um interfere with healthy brain waves with healthy frequency and so we have to, like we have to take measures you know and it's like you kind of can't be lazy today <laughs> unless you want to get kind of spiral down and get really sucked into those those bandwidths and lose yourself um, unfortunately that's where we're at in the modern industrial culture technological culture mm -hmm. so nature can always is our greatest ally is nature and even in nature because it's a mirror of our true of our true nature it loves us it's mirroring back to us our beauty our strength and the greatest healing force in the universe, of course, is love. So when we come to self-love, when we can just stay in or choose over and over again, um, no matter what, like I love myself, I respect myself, I forgive myself, I, I'm gonna be compassionate with myself today, it, it, that actually helps us unplug from those bandwidths that would have you dislike yourself and feel like you're never gonna be good enough, right? 
It's all frequency. <laughs> <laughs> it's so amazing. It's really, it's just amazing to me. I would almost feel speechless um, because I feel like I want to, I want to run off and start sort of experimenting <laughs> with all of this. Um, and just, yeah, yes. And just notice the changes that, um, that I, that I feel. Um, and I guess, I mean, I, I know we've got a little bit over time, but I, I do want to ask this question. So we, we know that we're raising our frequency because we feel more joyful, more peaceful. We feel good about ourselves. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. And that's our birthright. This is what we're, we're designed to be a, a sacred geometry, right? Our unique original blueprint is a beautiful sacred geometry, you know, that is vibrating at our soul essence, right? So our bodies are perfectly designed for our souls to reside within and move this vessel, beautiful garden body through this third dimensional realm that has form and emotion and duality. Um, and so, we have, we do, we are completely empowered to keep choosing what is our true state. And our true state is God consciousness, beauty, Christ conscious, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is our true nature. So when we are in joy, that's our true nature. Like never feel selfish for being joyful. Never feel selfish for doing self-care. Like for doing things to raise your vibration. Because we deserve to be tended to. We deserve to be um, uplifted by our world. We were born into a world that depletes us rather than uplifts us. So we are now these kind of acupuncture needles on the earth, the ones who are really like, I'm awakening, ascending, like I'm devoted to this. We have to raise the consciousness of humanity. And so we are kind of like these pioneer, not pioneers, but these like, like these light worker kind of um, spiritual warriors mm -hmm. who have to kind of be beacons of this pulsation of love to help mm -hmm. others wake up because we are coming up against this other bandwidth that would bring people out of, out of awareness, right? So it's a lot to ask, yet that's what we signed up for when we chose to come in. And what an amazing... What an amazing opportunity to actually step into that. Yeah, and so community is big. You want to raise your vibration? Keep going into groups of people who are like-minded, meditate with them, sing and tone with them, dance, singing and dancing, clears, clears energy, negative energy so quickly, you know? Wow. So if you find that you can't sing and dance and you're feeling self-conscious, that means you're hooked. <laughs> <laughs> into that lower bandwidth so find a way to break through even if you have to scream and like, ah, you know, <laughs> like ah, break through and start making sound um, and claiming claiming your sovereign reality creator consciousness again <laughs> Wow, fantastic. What a what an invitation you've you've given us today just to whew, launch into this um, in a more I think in a more sort of aware way than we probably have been stumbling along and with lots and lots of possibilities of do different ways of doing this. Um, I know you've got a really brilliant uh, free gift to share with people. So could you give us some information about that? Absolutely. Uh, my husband, Dwayne, and I uh, offer two to three times a year something called a Lightworker Boot Camp. And at these Lightworker Boot Camps, um, lightworkers, people on the path, you know, who need to receive tending, like giving, 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 okay, this is your day to just receive. And it's just like a bunch of light workers, light leaders lying on the floor <laughs> with blankets and pillows. And my husband and I sit at the head of the room. We have a sound shaman with bowls and chimes and gongs. And I bring in the higher dimensional frequencies um, and allow the transmission of wisdom, of the higher frequencies of sound and of physiological tending to happen. 
And so this particular recording that I'm giving to everybody is a recording of a treatment that was given at a Lightworker Bootcamp. And it was a treatment very specific to heal, um, raise the frequency of the endocrine system in the body and the correlating chakras uh, to recalibrate so that, so for instance, the heart chakra and the thymus gland are in perfect harmony with each other and at their highest health. And so we go through all the endocrine glands and the correlating chakras uh, and the higher dimensional helpers, the ones who have evolved beyond 3D and are at these higher dimensions, yet still can work with us. Mm -hmm. So they are doing these spiritual surgeries on everybody in the room. Well, the audio of this translates to immediate, uh, immediately um, the person listening is receiving this spiritual surgery. So we have a lot of instruction, you know, not a lot, but <laughs> there are some preparations you have to do to, before you listen to this audio track, Make sure you're not going to be interrupted, be hydrated, be comfortable, press play, receive the treatment, and then you need to integrate afterward because it really is like you just went to a hospital and got surgery and you need to treat it like post-op, right? So integrate, sleep, rest, lots of water. Um, yeah, so that's what, what I wanted to offer. I think it's about an hour, an hour and a half treatment. Okay, amazing. Sounds just just totally amazing. I think this is my word at the moment. It's just amazing. The link for this is right underneath this video. So, you know, just there. So make sure that, you know, if this is speaking to you, and I think it is, you know, just make sure that you do um, get hold of this and allow yourself to receive it. I love that you had that word there, receive. Um, because, well, that's what a gift is, you know, if you're, if you're the receiver, then you receive it. So allow it really to, allow yourself to be very receptive to the process and the guidance that comes with it. Um, I think, what a beautiful gift. Thank you, Marie, so much for coming and talking about this. It's been, um, you know, the A word again, amazing. It has been amazing. Um, I just feel I feel really full of joy actually and full of full of hope hope is a is a really great energy to have I think so with my water that is blessed and my color that I feel that I'm filling in my aura I mean these are just two ways but humming and all the different things that you've talked about really um just a, a whole uh, another another dimension that we can really engage in that is what, what the dimension that we're engaging in anyway but this is more conscious so thank you so much for coming and sharing that thank you thank you Alison it's such a pleasure and everybody don't forget the link is below so do um do get hold of this amazing gift okay and thank you everyone so much for joining us here today and yes I, I would like to know, and I'm sure Maria would too, you know, what resonates with you? Uh, you can drop us emails to tell us, you know, hey, I listened to the, the interview and uh, this really resonated with me, or I'm this color, maybe you're yellow like I am, maybe you're another color today, um, or maybe you've got questions, you know, just reach out. We'd really, both of us would love to hear from you, okay? Thank you, everybody, again, especially you, Maria. Thank you.